Alright, we will try again. Um, I actually found another one of these boards. The only thing is with these boards is that the uh, encryption code is in the actual chips, so you can't just swap them over. You can put it onto another drive, but uh, you'll still get gibberish out. So, the you know, best I can do is try to see if I can get the power section up and running again. Now, there are subtle differences between them in the um, controller section, so I'm really not able to... I was contemplating just swapping the controller chips but and maybe the uh, memory chip, but I can't guarantee that they'll be sufficiently similar. So, it's a less risky option to simply just go for getting the power rails up and running. So I guess I'll put that uh, coil back and um, see if we can at least get back to that starting point. Oh god, that was such a disaster. I don't know where that other one's gone, really. Okay, got to get my soldering iron running. <clears throat> Let's see. Get this good one off. Left it without melting it. Go. Now, now that it's off, oh, this one's slightly different. It's very clearly a coil. You can sort of see. Um, not sure if that's going to show up, but it, anyway, you can see the structure of it. It's a coil. Can't believe. Should have trusted my other instincts. That's a. That's not a cap. Idiot. Ah. Let's make these pads better. Wait, which one? Okay. Now I know this is the original because it's got the red button. Whereas the donor has got the white button. And it's also hotter. Wick this off. Wrong. No, you're too narrow. You're too fat. Where is my good wick? There it is. Okay, the perfect width. Two millimeter width. Lay down a tiny amount of good solder. Yeah. There we go. It's heaps. Yeah. My Amtec flux. It's heaps. Actually, because it's heat sensitive, I'm going to uh, solder this on manually. I mean, I know I shouldn't care too much about a bit of molten plastic, but yeah. Where'd they go? There it is. This is how this is how I usually do service mount until recently. Is 
so it doesn't bother me at all. Yes, it's a ginormous bit. On my soldering iron tip. There we go. Just going to check that. Yeah, it's lifted off the board a little bit, but it's nothing too much to be concerned about uh, in this case, because I really don't care. It's, as long as it does its job for long enough, I'm fine. It's not going back into production. Alright, this one. Now, theoretically, this has been going to work probably, but anyway, if this works, it should light up. It's not. Okay. So. Getting close. Uh. Alright, so. In my mind. I would maybe consider the controller. Mm. I'm really shooting in the dark here. Really, really am shooting in the dark. I'm gonna go for the controller. So I had to do this under the mic. Magnifying glass.
across her lap then. I swear I saw her lap. Okay, I think we've got success here. Uh, if I plug this into a computer with a USB cable, it probably should sustain that light. Oh god, no, you're not good. Okay, what the trick is with these, they, um, they try to be intelligent and not too much. Is that going to be still visible? Yep, okay. I don't have any sufficiently long USB 3 cables, so fortunately you can plug a USB 2 into these compact connectors. And yeah, see how we go. And I think we have a winner. Uh -huh. Yeah, looking good. It's running. Okay, well, I guess I should plug it into the 2 terabyte drive. Fingers crossed this works. Alright. Unplug this. This is not going to make any sense with the drive it's running on. This one's just a scrap drive. No, I just needed it so it could do some. Oh, please let us hope that's it. Uh, switching over to the uh, <coughs> the server view, and hopefully we have some luck. Yeah, we're back at the server. And we've plugged the drive in. Now, because this is coming in through USB 3, we don't have to switch it on or off or anything like that, which is a bit of an inconvenience if we're going to have to uh, power cycle this drive to get data off it. But let's see what we're being given. And well, this is weird. Okay, well, it's looking good. We've got, um, yeah, oh, that's different. Okay. But at least it's coming up properly. That's what we need. And okay, so it's SDC. So let's see if we can get this. Uh, SDC. Here we go. Let's see if we get any meaningful data, or if this is just going to be more gibberish. It's looking a bit gibberish-like at the moment still. Actually, what I can do is just see if I can uh, read the petition or not. Uh, uh. Well, that's much better than before. Before it wasn't giving me the petition. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully I don't bugger it up. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Oops, that's everybody's stuff. <laughs> Crap. Alright, that's that's a really good sign. <laughs> I think we actually may have done this. Just kind of curious that all I'm seeing is gibberish at the moment still. Now remember, there's also bad sectors on this uh, drive. I, while I was doing the soldering and fixing of this, it ended up something like 300k of bad sectors within the first 50 gigs. But fortunately, it didn't look like they were completely halting the drive. So fingers crossed, we get all the way through this, or at least enough to get all their data off. So I'm still not seeing I'm still not seeing any of my usual signatures for file types. So it's only twelve gigs in. Even still. And the 
drive is definitely not the happiest of thing. I'm just going to keep recording this and hopefully at some point I'll start seeing meaningful data. Oh, there we go, there's our first chunk of bad sectors. And these bad sectors is why I can't just mount the drive and copy the data off because your copy program will get to these points and it will just, depending on the program and how the kernel reacts, it will either just fail. Um, yeah, there's just so many things that can cause it. You could probably uh, not cause it, um, break it. Yeah, here we go, even more bad sectors, 139k. You could probably use something like rsync uh, or a use a combination of find and they do individual copy per file. That's another way. But I find for all the drama that it causes, it's easier just to try and clone the drive and then from there uh, patch up what you can. Because you'll find out of this, all these non-trim bad sectors that we're seeing here, or this section here, a fair portion of those will actually be found to be okay. It's just that the way DD Rescue works is if it hits a bad sector it then jumps a certain distance um, and just assumes anything in there is for the moment considered bad and hopefully it jumps to a new better area so that it can get as much of the good data off as possible before going back and stressing the drive trying to get the uh, potentially bad data off. Uh, it's a strategy that tries to maximize the amount of data you get off without damaging the drive. Uh, you better uh, data to damage ratio so to speak. Uh, I'm really curious as why I'm not seeing any meaningful file signatures yet in this. It's all... I mean I know it's only 20 gigs in roughly but I should be seeing something. And I know it must be reading decrypted because we were able to mount the drive. I wonder if I'm going to read it as the petition itself. That is to say, maybe the controller doesn't understand raw requests. Maybe it wants to have requests directly from SDC1. I'm just going to stop this and try that because this isn't giving me a lot of confidence right now. Z. Oh, sorry. I actually want to cancel that. Um. C1, 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 let's see if we go. Well, immediately I saw the NTFS signature there. Now the reason why I can sort of pick out signatures in amongst the data usually is because the uh, this data dump is from the start of the block and of course all your files are aligned to the start of the block so even though I can't see the rest of it most of what most of your signatures occur within the first sort of 32 to 128 bytes of the block so for JPEGs you'll see like JFIF um, and like PK zip, you see PK um, something something. But anyway, yeah, you, know, you tend to pick out the various signatures fairly easily. Um, you often see the word file up here. Uh, so when you don't see them, you start to panic a little bit and you think, oh no, what's going on? 
And further down here, even if it's up partway through a file, uh, you often see strings, uh, readable strings, even if they've got like dots in between them, like they're some sort of UTF encoding. So I'm 10 gigs in. Actually, one thing I should have checked when I did that mounting was to um, see what sort of data capacity we're looking at on the drive. Uh, where was I? It seems like I've got a lot of unopened windows here. Uh, um, Come on. No, my luck, I've just requested it to mount that petition as it's running across the bad sector. Yep. <laughs> uh, what are the chances? Come on. Hmm. This is really bad form. Normally you should not thrash back and forth, uh, not trying to do a DD rescue and mount at the same time. God, I'll just control C that, I'll resume that just in a second. Oh, great. Okay. Let's see. Oh, lovely. 802 gigs of data. That's that's just great. Yep. Um, let's keep it going. I've got enough space to. Uh, let's see, we have 2.1 terabytes left on our recovery drive. I've got a 8 gigabyte Seagate archive drive in here. Um, I wouldn't consider them for general purpose computing, yeah, just everyday desktop stuff. But for this sort of stuff where you're doing a lot of sequential um, writing or reading and nothing jumping around too much of randoms then uh, they're perfectly good. You really do want to have the right caching enabled when you're using these 8 terabyte shingle drives otherwise their performance just goes to absolute crap. Uh, when they're fresh, clean and working well with the system you will get something around 200 megabyte a second out of them so they're quite good for that. Uh, they are a little expensive but in terms of per terabyte they're quite cheap. Uh, just Give them a good test run when you first get them. I've had a couple of bad ones, but uh, I don't know whether that was just a batch of the first ones when they came out, or whether it was just my bad luck, I don't know. But it's always worth giving them a good run. So I'm going to leave this go. Uh, fairly sure this is recording the data off the drive properly, and it's not encrypted. It's just that for some reason, maybe it's a movies or something like that I'm looking at here. Uh, it's certainly not given me any hints that it's proper data other than the fact that we first saw NTFS at the start. On the upside we're not seeing any of the um, signatures that we had before in the encrypted driver. It was that, what was it, SMPK or something like that. So I'm just going to have to let this go. I don't really have any alternatives. Uh, I'm going to have to trust in it. 
and hopefully by the end of this it will be all good I can mount this image on a loopback and then copy all the data off to a new drive so until this is done um, well you won't really notice because once this is done I'll start the video again anyway see ya Okay, we're back again, and as you can straight away see, it looks like we've got good data coming through now. So, I don't know whether it was just maybe a large backup file or a movie or something like that. But, uh, as you can see, the, there's definitely clear good data coming through. You can read some of it as it goes past. So, I'm going to now leave this go. I've got uh, quite a lot to go. 1.9... Uh, sorry, 1.9 terabytes to go. <laughs> so it reckons it's going to be 5 hours, 48 minutes. I would say that's going to be closer to 8 hours by the time it gets towards the end of the drive and the read speed starts dropping off. I also don't know what sort of physical damage I'm going to be dealing with on the surface in terms of bad sectors. So yeah, definitely about 8 hours or so at the least. But the good thing is we've managed to get the data off. We had to fix the controller by replacing the uh, broken um, switch mode voltage regulator. That was a real shot in the dark, but uh, thank God I did it. And even more thankfully, I had a close enough donor that I could take that from because there is absolutely no way in heck I could otherwise work out what that controller chip was. I mean, I sort of knew roughly what it was. I knew it was going to be some sort of um, uh, buck controller, but picking out the right one, that would have been a nightmare. If I was pushed, probably the other alternative I could take was to get a second-hand uh, drive of the same type and then you know, use it as a donor for this one. Still, like I said, we got lucky, that's really good. The data's going to come off this hopefully just fine. Uh, once it's all red and it's picked out as many of the bad sectors as it can, uh, I'll be able to then just mount that image, copy the data I can off to a new drive for the client, and everyone should be happy. I should get my money and they should get their data. Okay, we're down to the last 30 seconds or so of the initial pass of the hard drive recovery. It's, uh, as you can see, I wasn't too far off with my 8 hour estimation. Um, to be fair, we still haven't uh, trimmed the drive, so goodness knows how long that's going to take. But yeah, seven and a half, seven hours, 40 minutes, close enough. Uh, be interesting to see how quickly the trimming goes. Sometimes, depending on the state of the drive, that can really take a long time. Uh, but for the most part, let's see here we go. Still, the upside of all this is that it worked with the um, repaired decryption um, USB bridge. Thank goodness for that. So we have 99.99% of the data by default already. And let's see, we're just going to chew through this last bit, probably over the next hour or two. But uh, I'm really happy with that. I am going to actually try and find out what that uh, SOT 235 controller chip is or something that's quite close to it. I'll do another video where I will uh, probe around the pins, see what's going on, and then post up what possible equivalents we could use. Because I know there's quite a few other people who have failed Western Digital uh, MyBook controller boards and the same sort of thing. They obviously, you know, they've tried replacing it with other ones, it doesn't work, and the only solution is, at least for us normal people, <laughs> is to repair the board. Uh, so long as the controller itself isn't damaged, uh, you know, assuming it's a power supply issue, then at least there's a pretty good hope of getting the data back finally. So um, yeah, everything's looking good. Looks like we've cut down quite a bit. We're already into the scraping phase now, I think. Yep, we're into the scraping phase. So it's progressing quite nicely. This probably should be done by the time 8 hours is up. Alright, well... Uh, I'm going to call the end of this video. Um, we've already seen that we can load the data up, you know, mount the image and everything like that. So I know I am going to get the data out of this. Copying the image across is merely 
uh, for convenience so that I don't have to depend on the hard drive and also makes it easy for me to copy the files off without dealing with stalling and unknown issues that uh, might come up if I keep hammering the drive. So thanks for watching everyone and uh, I'll post up the next video as soon as I can.